Well, I was able to do And this is how they just found out. Here's the test. What happened to you, Anthony? Here's the test. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you blacked out there, aren't you? All right. So, what, uh, how you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. Sounds like you got somebody coming to course with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to hold you up. Uh, first off, uh, you said that you want to cover. Anyway, uh, so what do you got? Uh, uh, nothing much. Every, everything seems to be going um, pretty well. I, I'm being on Friday trying to kind of get the concept a little bit better and better each week on um, on um, articles and things. Uh, yeah, I think I think so. Uh, I just graded uh, everybody's uh, take on the article I sent out. Uh, right. It's been really good. I like that you brought out half gold. That was uh, that was perfect. Um, you would have seen in my um, response uh, kind of a take on a couple other things more towards right. the leadership style. Remember from uh, your daft text. Um, you know, right. um, in chapter 11, it, it was talking about diversity, and we spent, or you would have spent a lot of time in that chapter also covering uh, women. And, right. Uh, so, one of the things that they brought out was a uh, an aspect um, that was called interactive leadership. Yes. That contained a few things. And so uh, that was kind of what I was looking to see because, um, you know, you're doing interactive leadership and that entails certain qualities. And um, when you're in a ostensibly not-for-profit, uh, right. PBS is supposed to be a, uh, a non-profit in the true sense, um, then your, your dynamics are not the same. And if you're now having to take care of um, issues of fundraising, uh, right. because you're relying on donations, and of course, Congress's goodwill, and then you're also dealing with the Me, Pound Me Too, you know, hashtag Me Too, uh, scenarios and uh, and you got to keep current and then you're also balancing uh, programming that people want and uh, programming that people sometimes are willing to pay for I thought the point on uh, <clears throat> how she was dealing with Ken Burns was interesting 
uh, Ken Burns having done, of course, some uh, pretty uh, impressive uh, documentaries, not least of which uh, the Civil War, which a lot of people enjoyed last uh, back in the 90s. Anyway, so uh, in my feedback to you, you would have seen um, some things. Right, yeah, I, I, yeah, I read that, the feedback. Okay. And, you know, the one question I have is that you know, the difference um, by what you ask and then what the book outlines, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes right. there's a little difference, you know? Right. So I think sometimes I, I, I'm kind of getting it a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to stay with the book, but I want to answer your questions because you know the book when it when you go to the different um styles um that they have as far as you know what type of um whether it's um uh you know the the four the the different ones that's grandma book right quick but yeah the, the four different the four different styles you know whether you know this is a problem you know is it going to be a problem or is it um uh, I was at the tip of my tongue right now, but you know those different styles. So, and then when you go by that, and then if you go by how they write it up, it's just a little bit different than when we have to provide feedback for you from the analysis. Um, great question and good point. I've got you. So right. up front, we said we're going to run it a little differently. Yeah, yeah. And, and we don't really have. The flexibility of doing cases, right? In this court. So the decision by uh, the dean was to use articles. Well, articles are predominantly problems, right? Yeah. Now, that's not to say you can't do it a certain way, and so that's why up front, if you tell me, I am analyzing this article from a one of the three. So either a decision. Yeah, an evaluation right. or a problem diagnosis. Right. And now you've got me going in your direction. Okay, right. Okay, so that's why up front, um, we give you the three questions, kind of get you into it. And then as you're reading through and you get through chapter six, you now at least see right. analyze a decision, an evaluation, or a problem diagnosis. So you're almost kind of like halfway through the text by the time you learn. Yes. Yeah. So now, if you notice my questions to you, starting around week three, was, is this a problem? Is this a decision? Is right. this an evaluation? So if I know what direction you're heading, you're, you're going to take me along for the ride. Right. There isn't a wrong answer to that. So, right. Here's an example I'll give you, and this is in my feedback, if I could show you real fast. Okay. So I'm gonna throw up uh, PowerPoint slides. Let's do that to you. Um, let me get in the right. <laughs> Bear with me just a second. So I'm going to take you into, here you are. All right. You should see some PowerPoint slides on your screen. Okay. You see them? Right. Okay. So let me just, I'm not going to read every word for word. But I want you to make a position statement. And a position statement is identical to thesis. It's right. Clear, it's strong, it's easy, okay? And it's sharply focused. It organizes your essay. And so if you have it, and I know where you're heading, and it prevents you from yandering off, in other words, vectoring off it. Okay. What you plan to argue and how you plan to argue it is your thesis. Your text says the text says <laughs> yeah. what is your conclusion and what is the evidence you use to support it? 
they're the they're identical. Thesis right. and position statement. Okay. So the bottom of the slide you see up front. Okay, I'm asking who's your protagonist. So let's make sure we know who we're talking about. Right. And then number two is is it a decision and evaluation of problem diagnosis? There's a fourth one out there called rules, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't even really cover it in the text. And that's where you start seeing me helping you out with some questions. Okay. What the leadership challenge is, how to change it. Okay, so you start to see me frame it. Right. And then I need you to take a position. Pick one. Doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. I may read the article as an evaluation. You come in and did it as a pro as a problem diagnosis. I'm not going to count you wrong. It's only wrong if you're not backing up your argument. Okay. Right. All right. So, your slide would have changed, and at the bottom, you, uh, you will see I've filled this in. So, mm -hmm. our protagonist is the PBS CEO, right. Ms. Paula yep. Kerger, right? I didn't right, know. yeah. Okay, I'm going to handle this as an evaluation. Mm -hmm. So, I've got to come up with criteria, three to five pieces of criteria, right? Right. Okay, and then I've got to take the position. So I'm going to evaluate, is she an effective leader or is she not? Those are my only choices. Right. Okay, we're not doing maybes. So mm -hmm. it's either I'm going to evaluate and say she is, or I'm going to evaluate and say she is not. I don't know that yet. I haven't, I haven't found my evidence, right? Right. So the slide should have changed. And you would have seen now I've got about five things that I pulled out of the article or I've looked at. Okay. So, uh, she's right. here public broadcast digital air. She, uh, you know, one of the great questions, I loved it. What's your explainer at cocktail parties? Right. Uh, Ken Burns, you have to do assumptions about how your organization works and how people within it behave. Great line. And then I went into the DAF text. Said, okay, let me see something about women and leadership. Okay. Okay. That's all I did. And I found that there in page 339 of your DAP text, female leaders were rated as having right. more idealized influence, more inspirational motivation, more considerate, offering more stimulation. In fact, the exhibit 11.3 kind of had that. Now, whether we believe this or not is for you to argue or for me to argue. Right. But uh, try to get everybody in the course to bring in what you learned in LDR 300 has been a challenge. You, you're doing a good job. I love that you brought in, like I said, path goal. Okay, find something and bring it in. Right. All right. So I've got all those. Well, that kind of leads me to a, an evaluation that, yeah, I think she's an effective leader. I've got enough here. Now, there might be a couple things I could find that the track, and quite honestly, I should. Mm. That's the intellectual honesty or analytical honesty and the importance of the evidence that you uh, were tested on at the midterm. But we'll just go with that. All right, well, if I use everything, I'm gonna have a paper that's way too long. Mm -hmm. Let's knock it down to three to five. So let's go with three. And you see what I've done here. My position statement is at the bottom. Yeah, what position did I take? I'm taking the position she is an effective leader. Yeah. So everything I write had better be backed up that she's right. an effective leader. I start throwing in there, well, she sucked at this or she screwed that up. Right. I'm, <laughs> interested, I'm gonna frustrate you, right? Right. So but look what I did. I went into those five and I picked three and I just I, I color coded them like a stoplight, red, yellow, and green. And then I just pulled right down into my thesis statement. Paula Berger is an effective leader due to the fact she demonstrates qualities as identified in the DAP text. She has. Okay, well, if she's steering PBS into the digital era, um, that kind of sounds like she's got a vision and she's implementing. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. She has vision and she's able to implement. Two, well, what's an explainer at a cocktail party? Well, 
you've got to be able to communicate your mission. Right. And you got to do that efficiently. It's what we call an elevator pitch. If we were doing this in a classroom setting, instead of you writing about the article a week that you do, right. whatever article you pick, you'd be up here briefing it. Oh. You would get five minutes to talk about your article and get all those points across. Okay, to teach people on an elevator pitch, you only got a couple minutes to make your case in the hook, whoever it is you're talking to. You're you're going up the up elevator with the CEO. And right. you wanna you wanna tell him you got a great right. idea for you name it. Right. And well you got only a couple minutes to set that hook. So you better know what you're talking about and get his interest, right? Or her interest. Right, yeah. Okay. So her explainer cocktail party to me means she explains and communicates her mission with the first. Right. And then, yeah, I like Ken Burns, but that didn't quite work. Uh, Daft text, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And then I read in the article, you do have certain assumptions on how your organization works and how people behave. Look at all our practices and the way we deal to make sure everyone understands how we expect people to operate. Wow. Okay. Well, now she's just explaining culture. Right. Yeah, culture. And being able to enforce it. I would assume their code of conduct doesn't include sexual harassment. Right. But it's only good as people enforce it. And what did she do? Hey, she took a couple people off the schedule. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's. Okay, there was some good structure. Yes, wow. down at the bottom, I've got my thesis statement. Right. Okay, well, now I just I just write my answer. I've got it. Okay, so you know, what are the challenges? Well, a challenge for any leader is to be effective. She is. A challenge for any leader to have vision, be able to implement it. She is. A challenge for any leader is to be able to understand your organization mission and explain it. She is. A challenge for any person is to know her culture and and everybody keyed in on she had fired or you know removed from the schedule two guys right well that's good now you know dive into that a little bit and that's what i'm trying to get everybody to do this week is i got it they did something wrong okay well what does that tell you as a leader well first off does pbs have a code of conduct hmm. And we do this in any, I mean, pick an organization that's been in the news lately. Wells Fargo was falsifying accounts. Yeah. So they have a code of conduct that said, don't do that? Probably. VW was caught, you know, with uh, software fixes for their emissions control problems. Right. VW had a code of conduct that said, don't do that? Of course they did. Yeah. But the problem is, nobody was enforcing it. So, until you so, get caught, yeah, you know, and yeah, yeah, until you get caught, and now, okay, uh, you know, there's a difference between culpable negligence, you should have known better, and criminal negligence, you did know better. Mm. Okay? If you should have known better, then yeah, I'll go ahead and give you a pass. Uh, if you're the CEO of a major organization, and you've got rampant fraud, at some point that becomes a little bit more than you should have known better, and it trips into you did know better. Right. But in the end, we expect CEOs, just like NCAA head coaches, hey, or, C, or commanding officers, you're responsible for everything that unit does or fails to do. So for some of us, yourself and myself, we have a very high expectation of, leaders right and so when leader gets out and says i had no idea that was going on in my organization well either you should have known better or you're incompetent and i haven't decided which yes because <laughs> i'm a true believer that you know b behavior is learned so people don't just wake up and decide to start doing something things have been going on for a while and, and no one's saying anything and then you know eventually you know, you think you get farther and farther, and then you get caught because everybody starts to think it's the norm. There you go. I like how you said that. That's perfect. 
Now work that into one of your responses this course. Right. And you'll again, you know, hit it out of bar. That's exactly right. And so what, you know, the other piece to this a little bit is your show me you put some thought in. Um, you know, I'm not going to single out any of your fellow students, but a couple are really good at regurgitating what's in the article. Uh, the problem is, just as your uh, make sure I get the right text. Your text right. says typically when a student does that, it means they don't know what to write about. Right. I mean, now you're just filling space. Give me the courtesy of at least assuming that I've read your article. Okay, so I know. I know okay. certain things about it. Now, if you're going to bring this into your paper, then it needs to probably be the evidence you're using. I got mm -hmm. it. This is the evidence I use. So tell me something about it. Um, hey, uh, you know, the leader has to have vision. Okay, well, my my high school student daughter knows that. Now give me the benefit of what you learned over your years and having gone through LDR 300. Right. Tell me a little bit more. Hey, it's critical in a vision that it's relevant and that it's achievable. Yeah. And uh, or it's even more important of all the troop leading steps. Supervision is the most important. If you can't implement the vision, it's no good. So. You know, in other words, you know, dive into this a little bit, and uh, and give me the benefit of what you know. And you're doing you're doing a good job of that. I like what you've done lately, so I encourage you to keep it up. But I've just now thrown you a curveball. Okay, so you uh, let's see here. You have. Let me see. Uh, U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. Well, coincidentally, I just sent out an article on my Facebook page this week about or today about that. Okay. So it turns okay. out that a truck bringing mail to us here in Jacksonville uh, caught on fire. You see that? Well, I didn't see that. Yeah. So. Um, well, I got you here. Let's see if I can tune it up real fast. But anyway, so now what you've got is uh, you got a problem, right? Right. Okay, you just you just burned up a bunch of people's U.S. Postal Service semi truck burns in North Carolina, mail destroyed, fire on USPS truck. Mail destroyed. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you get the Jacksonville Daily News. I don't. No. Uh, well, I, I, from time to time. Yeah, I, I don't get it anymore. Right. But I'm, I'm sure it's in WITN and everybody else. But so. Uh, Tractor trailer can mirror mail to be delivered to Jacksonville, Maine, Bryn Mawr, wow. Everett Lyle, yeah, and Swansboro. So, uh, oh, you're going to get a letter that says yeah. it affects you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, okay, so I'm only showing this to lead you to where I'm heading, and that is. Your U.S. Postal Service paper. Um, I need to know who your protagonist is, right? First thing right. to figure out, and then are you approaching this as a decision they've got to make? Uh, are you evaluating something, or are you identifying and diagnosing a problem? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you got to kind of figure out which way you're heading, because as the text shows you, there's different ways. Of analyzing and presenting those. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I was thinking that at the same time, I was looking at decision and I was looking at problem. Because, I mean, in the past few years, you know, just 
they um they have lost a lot of money and then they're catch they're trying to catch up but then they also have you know this thing with amazon they even got the president coming out and admits to something about amazon and things of that nature as far as what the post office should be le not letting them get away with so you know the decision they need to come i mean i think they they're looking at as far as you know the email world now and i started lost on a bit so they're trying to get involved with the electronic aspect of it of the thing but at the same time do we shut other people out so that's you know that's, that's what i was looking at today you know so it, i think it could almost be two you know vice just one but well again remember this is a leadership class right so uh, that should help you focus you. So if, since it's a leadership class, right. put that word in front of each of them. Mm -hmm. Is this a leadership decision? Is this a leadership evaluation? Or is this a leadership problem diagnosis? Right. Okay. Okay, and that's why I have you come up with a protagonist so you can start to uh, I'm using my hands here. There we go. You can <laughs> yeah. Note this thing down. Right. Because you're right. It's you're all over the page. You could write, you know, books about this. Yes. So, my recommendation to you is, yes, you pick USPS as an organization. Pick a protagonist in there. Say you're right. yeah. as the CEO. Okay. Mm. Yeah. What's a leadership problem, decision, or evaluation we need to make? Right. Uh, you can evaluate the current CEO on whether he's an effective leader. Mm -hmm. You can talk about U.S. Postal Service has had some hiccups, and so the problem is how the leadership should handle these problems. They need to communicate clearly. They need to hold people accountable. Like mm -hmm. I said, if the all else fails, go back to those seven uh, elements of organizational success, right? Right. And who's at Fort House? Or, okay, uh, CEO needs to make a decision. Uh, do we still have U.S. Postal Service or not? Well, yeah, that's really not a decision he can make. And so right. I, I really caution you on being careful where you head with some of this. There's mm -hmm. certain things he can decide, uh, but yeah, you know, the problem with postal service is it's a unique organization. Yeah. Uh, because it can't be run like a business um, because everybody expects to have a post office in their in their hometown. Right. Very frustrating to me to go over to the one off of Huff Drive because I needed to send out a, a package to be told they don't even do that there. Right. They come back over here to, uh, well, the one right next to us here at the uh, at the uh, campus, um, off of uh, Henderson Drive, Hodgson Drive. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's places that a business would shut it down, just not right. Not profit. Well, that's very difficult to do with the postal model. Uh, and so. You've got a quasi-government entity, um, and now they're also having to compete with, yeah, FedEx and Amazon and UBS, you know, UPS and DHL and the like. So I would, I would suggest um, find out what you can on the CEO. And right. Yeah. The leader or not, and what you might recommend to him as an effective leader, or uh, find some problems. You know, and I kind of just gave you one. Right. Is it a problem when a truck full of mail burns? Mm. Well, what if you uh, what if you're waiting on a paycheck? Yeah, that's the issue. I mean, I don't know what I'm expecting, and that's the other problem. I didn't realize right. this, but um, you could go on the U.S. Postal Service webpage and sign up for uh, 
ഒരു വേർത്തെടുക്കും when you know you can get out of here in 10 minutes. <laughs> so, informed delivery. So you could go on the website and you can digitally preview your mail and uh -huh. manage your packages scheduled to arrive soon. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So that tells me I could go in once I sign up for this, and I just did it. And here's preview incoming mail. I could go into this portion of their website and find out what's coming my way. Yeah. What? And figure out when it don't come your way. That's pretty damn good, isn't it? I mean, that's innovation right there. Yeah. That's perfect. You know, but I didn't know that. Right. Um, I can tell you that I'm sure it is. But once uh, you go into that article on, you know, hey, the truck burned. Yeah. The first person everybody, or the first question everybody's going to ask is, oh, I wonder what was coming my way that's now lost. Yeah. Well, if, if they did a better job communicating, we'd all know. Hey, we should have signed up for informed delivery, and we would know. Maybe. Right. Anyway, for what it's worth. See, that's the that's the problem you got. Is you come in on these zooms, then you probably leave with more questions than what you did coming in. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but like I said, up up front, you know, scope your paper a little bit. Okay. Uh, and and then you're gonna have to pick, you know. And like and uh, you've got the slides, I'll put them in your feedback. Right. Go back and take a look. Uh, you know, and this is why I've been bugging everybody. Hey, pick your protagonist, figure out what we're doing here. Because once you do that, and now you read your article. Things become a lot easier. It's not. It's not trying to make it more harder for you. It's trying to make it easier. Because what's happening is, is you know, we're all kind of looking at an article, and I can see it a different way than you. And, and that's one of the beauties. It's something that really comes out in the classroom that doesn't really kind of come out on online. Mm. Is in classroom, people are a little bit freer to say, "Man, Anthony, I didn't see it the same way you did." Right. Online, everybody says, oh, what a great job, Anthony. I completely agree, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate the spirit. Right. Frustrating because it's not helping uh, in this regard. And that is, hey, you know, tell me how you're looking at this. Because then that'll make my argument a little better. Right. If I know the instructor is always looking at things from an organizational success perspective, and that may key me in that if I use that in my future responses, I'll do a little better in that course. For what it's worth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but in the end, whatever you do, um, you, you know, whatever position you take, and you back that with your evidence, it'll be fine. And make sure it, it covers, you know, some of those leadership principles and the like. So right. you notice every week I kind of key you in on a certain aspect out of LDR 300. Okay. Uh, one week we talked a little bit more about vision. One week we talked about change. Yes. It was Connors. This week, my response, I talked more about leadership style and that that type of. Uh, those elements of, um, you know, and so, uh, or culture, or, you know, in other words, uh, and then this week's article, what was this week's article? I can't remember that. Um, I wrote it down, I forgot myself. Okay. Um, 
it snapped, okay? They've overhauled their leadership. Uh-oh, what does that look like? Yeah. <laughs> team, huh? Yes, team. Yeah. Okay, and you've done teamwork before. I'm wondering. Right. So yeah. you see what I'm getting at. I'm trying to give you all, you know, in part an idea of pull. I don't necessarily care what you pull as long as you pull it and then can apply. It. Right. And it makes sense. Because again, I'll look at, you know, I'll look at U.S. Postal Service differently than maybe that, that the direction you were thinking of going. And that's okay. Because up front, you're gonna tell me, hey, here's my protagonist, here's the way I approached it, here's my position statement. Okay, well at that point, I'm along for the ride. Yes. So it's what you decide to do, and now I'm following you. Okay, if you don't do those things and we're kind of weaving in and out, then you know I'm, I'm gonna who's steering the train? And now you know I'm kind of going through my own thoughts. You're trying to give me your thoughts, and we're trying to figure each other out. So, uh, and it just it'll help you uh, communicate because you're limiting yourself to hey, I'm only gonna talk about three things in this. Or mm -hmm. Four things, and that's it. You know? And so then, if somebody says, "Well, you know, did you think of this? Did you think of that?" You know, the response is, "Yeah, but you know, I handled it this way using these pieces of criteria." You know, that that's not the way I was arguing my point. You know, if we want a further discussion, we can. You know, hang in there. Yes. I'm still not happy about U.S. Postal Service burning my mail. All right. so. <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, I don't think I had any. Uh, yeah. Right. I didn't have any letters or anything coming. I wondered why I didn't get some of my normal bills. I bet you I'm still going to get all that spam uh -huh. and uh, circulars and all yeah. that mail, though, aren't I? <laughs> of course. <laughs> all right you got anything else uh no sir that's fine good again i understand your point you're right it what what we're putting out here in moodle and kind of forcing you into and yeah there's there's specific questions on that leadership paper that you'll have to cover right you're right introduction description explanation okay but right there i gave you four pieces of criteria right did i yep now that's not to say you have to use these but i'm going to expect at least you to talk about it. yes i don't so, yeah that's there right there okay but in the end, you know, it's your analysis of leadership issues. Sounds like you got a party going on here. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then just, you know, have some fun with it. Right. Um, but yeah, you know that the formatting and some of the things that you're asked to come up with in the text is basically building your case. A lawyer doesn't present to the judge everything he or she knows about the client. The lawyer covers what he or she needs to. Just as in any uh, class you've taken before, I don't necessarily need you to show me your work. Right. You know, I want you to use some of the techniques the text talks to you about. Try to follow that aspect of analysis because, quite frankly, it's asking you the same thing. In an evaluation or in a decision, you're to identify the criteria. In fact, as the test question asked, 
it's the most important thing you're going to do.